Tesla is going to deliver about 83,000 Model 3s this year in my estimation. Let's see how I got to this number. Before I get into the data, I wanted to give a big shout out to Wonder Capital for supporting the show. Wonder Capital helps investors like you and me diversify our portfolios and help fight global climate change at the same time. They provide loans to small and medium sized businesses who are trying to go solar. You see, banks don't understand how to fund these things, and so Wonder Capital comes in and provides them with the financing they need. Wonder Capital takes no fees and they deliver monthly payments into your investment account with up to 8.5% annually. Now you can get started with as little as $1,000 today. So if you want to help fight global climate change and diversify your portfolio, you can go to wondercapital.com slash teslanomics and get started right now. That's wondercapital with the U dot com slash teslanomics. Now let's dive into the data. The Model 3 is Tesla's mass market EV. If you're unfamiliar with it, it starts at about $35,000 as a base price, but most speculation puts them at the low 40s to upper 50s, depending on which options you want to go along with it. Now, they're really hoping that this is gonna make EVs commonplace here in the United States and in many other countries. And of course, this price tag is before any federal tax incentives or state tax incentives that you may qualify for. Prior to even delivering a single car, they have over 400,000 reservations, and it looks like beginning in July of 2017 is when they're actually gonna start delivering them to the first people that ordered, which were the employees. They get what you know as founder series cars, which maybe have a few options and let them work out the kinks before selling them to the public where they have a bit uh, harder time appeasing any concerns that they may have. Well, how's it going? Elon Musk recently had some comments about this in the shareholders meeting here in California. We have kept the initial configurations for Model 3 very simple. This is critical to achieving a rapid production ramp. Big mistake we made with the X is way too much complexity right at the beginning. That was very foolish. And the Model X has way too many cool things in it that should have really been rolled out in version 2, version 3. That would have been the sensible way to do it. So initially, the Model 3 configurators, it's kind of going to be like, what color do you want and what size of wheels do you want? That's basically going to be the configurator. There will just be a single motor to begin with, and then we will have the dual motor config, if we are lucky, towards the end of this year or more likely next year. So it sounds like things are going well. It seems like they're gonna be able to deliver at least some of these vehicles in July, and other people that are gonna want these specific options may have to wait, but there'll be plenty of people lined up ready to take those cars as soon as they're available to them. So how many are they really gonna make this year? Well, they did give some guidance on this not too long ago, and they said that they should be able to deliver 1,000 vehicles per week in July, 4,000 per week in August, and 5,000 per week in September before hitting the target of 10,000 vehicles sometime in 2018. Now this is with the goal of producing 400,000 Model 3s in 2018. These are some aggressive numbers and I'm not quite sure if they'll actually be able to hit them. This is after myself going to the Fremont factory and reading some other analysts' opinions on this. In particular, Steve Funk is an industry analyst that knows the automotive industry and he says this just isn't possible. Steve says that Tesla has not yet achieved the alien dreadnought in automobile manufacturing. While the process has become highly automated with the extensive use of robots, there are limits. Fremont is not much different from any other automobile manufacturing plant. If anything, it's less efficient than most. Now, after being there, but not having any clue about manufacturing facilities and all this, I can say that it didn't appear that the size of the factory alone was big enough to really accommodate uh, this mass market. So that means they're gonna have to do something else. Steve continues by saying, because Tesla has not expanded the Fremont factory, it is reasonable to expect the two assembly lines have a nominal capacity similar to NUMI. Here's the NUMI capacity. And Numi is what was there before. It was a GM and Toyota thing that they were combining on. And in fact, this is how Tesla got the plant to begin with for such a good price. The truck line has a nominal capacity of 180,720 jobs per year. The small car line for the Model 3 has a nominal capacity of 225,900 jobs per year. From 2000 to 2009, Numi produced an average of 154,522 Tacomas on the truck line, less than the nominal capacity. Because the truck line is slower than the small car line, Tesla uses it for the S and the X production. 
Tesla forecast Model S and X production to be no more than 100,000 units in 2017. Presumably this is demand constrained. The small car line is faster and is slated to assemble the Model 3. The 225,900 capacity figure is based on two shifts with straight time. So I agree, having visited the facility myself and understanding a little bit about this, that I don't think Tesla's gonna be able to do it just with the one factory. And this is actually not bad news. This means that they're considering, and in fact, Elon said, seriously considering new factories in their recent shareholders meeting, up to as many as 20. So for my estimation, I'm downgrading the initial estimate that Tesla put out in terms of number of cars per week that they're gonna hit and how fast they're gonna hit them. I believe that the production line will come online in early September, and they'll see a big jump in production around then. Remember, they have to make the batteries in Nevada, and that currently is being done manually, and that will then become automated. Then they have to ship all those parts and everything over to the Fremont factory to assemble the cars. So once they get that going, we'll see exponential growth. So Elon talked a little bit about this recently, and he said, another thing I really want to emphasize is the production ramp and what it tends to look like. It's exponential. Ultimately, it's an S-curve. An exponential goes to linear, then goes to log, and it's very difficult to predict exactly where that beginning part of the exponential and the S-curve fits in between quarterly reporting. So he agrees, even those numbers they gave out initially are gonna be fuzzy, especially when you consider they only report these figures quarterly. So once the equipment is installed in both the Gigafactory and the line is brought up to speed at Fremont, I think we're gonna see exponential growth. This will lead to them hitting that 5,000 cars per week number sometime in late October using what I'm considering a realistic or average growth curve. In developing this, I also ran a few other simulations, a more aggressive curve and a more conservative one, but both achieving essentially the same amount of cars produced per year. So when you add all this up, you're looking at about 83,000 cars before 2018. Now, of course, these are just estimates and the real numbers are gonna be different than this, but I wanted to see exactly how Tesla is gonna get to these figures and what that might look like using the models that we know of today. Bottom line, this is gonna be a big year for Tesla and for the EV market here in the United States. So what do you think? Is Tesla gonna beat my number? Are they gonna hit their number of 100,000 cars or whatever the original estimate was? I wanna know from you. So please leave a comment down below or shoot me a note at teslanomics.co. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing if you like facts and figures and digging into the details instead of just looking at the flashy appearance of things. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you back here next time.